There you yep, go. There you go. Love <sighs> that sound. Right, so looking at this, what's going on? We got snapperoonie of a couple of, not snapperoonie, but the, you know, the, the tops of the Torx bolts let go and twisted. Yeah. And will not release. So, you so can, rather than looking like this, they're now being that drilled. One, that was the one that lost the top off it. Yeah. So it lost the top section. Just snapped off, sheared These off. two just started twisting and not playing the game, so it's ceased ceased before that happened. So what I'm going to try and do is, I blew up one drill. So the goal now is to sub, to drill this out a little bit more without breaking my wrist. And without going too fast. Get the magnet, clean Slip it up. It all up. Back in with the magnet. So I'm fairly deep down there. So if we have a look at this one, and then we look at this one, then I do this without hopefully burning myself. So that's the depth minus the swarf. So I'm well and truly below. Yeah, if I turn it this way, I'm well and truly into that shoulder on this bolt. Yep. So in theory, if enough tension has been released because I've minimized the wall thickness to that cap, this unit should come off. With the tap, tap it out. Tap it out, yeah. Well, not even tap it out, just use a heli coil or something like that. I tried a heli coil the other day and didn't work. I tried tapping it with a with a hammer and a chisel, and that didn't work. So I'm going to grab the hammer and chisel because I just think it needs a little bit of percussive force to help it release itself. Yep. There's a hammer, it's a small hammer. So yeah, I tried this traditional easy out the other day. Screwed that in, try and reverse it out. It didn't want to play the game at all. So, what I'm going to do now, put that back in there. And then I tried tapping it around. I'm just going to try doing now is just hitting around the base of the fastener to see whether. There you go. Did you see that yeah. movement? Yeah. It's caving in itself. Yeah. So, it wouldn't do that until I drilled so that. So, now you can try. Now, this should just take it straight out. except it's slightly too big for the application. So I'll just give it another hit and then I'll see if I can just tap, 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 tap. So you can see it's going yeah. left to right. So will it turn? in an anti-clockwise direction even though it feels like it's released the tension the bolt wants to move side to side
this whole problem could have been created during assembly. They may have not lubricated sufficiently underneath the, the head of the bolt when they installed it, and then it's just bound up. Maybe I just I can't answer why this is happening to this. First of all, I thought it might have been my older tool, a worn out tool, a worn out. But that is using it. Turn. It just literally refuses to turn. Goes left to right. Yeah, you can see it moving in there. Yeah. Um, so this guy, you reckon, is just a bit too big. Well, to do I can the job. try it again. I've typically what you do is you line it no, up. Yeah, nail it in there. As you nail it in, you turn it in an anti-clockwise direction. And then go and find something to swing on. Shouldn't. Something this loose, I should be able to get away with, and it's just not twisting. Yeah, it's not, it is uh, not twisting at all. I'm going to see if I got a slightly smaller one, but I still reckon that's just going to fail. So this is next size down screw extractor, which goes deeper down. In fact, it's probably too small. Mm. I don't know, yeah, something, a bit of a something a bit then, see how long that lasts. I have absolutely no faith in screw extractors to be <laughs> seen honest with you. <sighs> so is there a theory, take the other ones out, and then you just got a bit more play in that. But um, possibly, yeah, head. that might. But you got to remember, your heads are dowel, so there'll be dowels in these heads. Yeah, right. So nothing's going to shift until everything can lift. So it's not like you can work it, you know. So have you seen this? So what do you do? Have you seen this before? Do never. You have to drill it all people I know have never seen this. Talk about yeah. this. People shake their head. I've never seen this. Never heard of this happening. So in theory, you just drill a finer pilot hole all the way down. Use a smaller screw extractor. Just well, I could keep trying this. I just don't understand. If I've already drilled a centimetre past the head, centralised it, you know, this isn't twisting. So maybe the, the goal is just to keep drilling till that, till just the cap pops off, which was one possibility. Mm. So we drill until the top half of this head just literally shears away, yep. right? And then lift the head off put the vice grips yeah, on the side yeah, of this well, bolt left. Yep. and then just drive the bolts out so it all lift off with yep. these one two possibly three of these bolts still in situ still in, in the block in the block why did it do it that's really the question is it because it's had too much of a hit or I don't know that's loose maybe I should loosen some more off I don't know let me just get the original tool that I used to load the torque up so it's an E14 so like it's not, in terms of E14s, it's, it's had a harder life, but it's not junk, it's not bin time. Yeah. See, that was, I'll just loosen that. I loosened these with the larger one. That's all loose. That's loose. That's loose. So there's nothing's doing anything. Yeah. They're all still sitting there. These two, and they're, they're they started to twist as I did them with the, uh, with the bigger half inch. So then I, I ceased before I completely destroyed them, thinking there may be some advantage. I'm just going to give this another tap. I want to go easy tapping aluminium heads with. Yeah. This is sometimes what you actually just got to do. It's mainly these bearing journals I need to be cautious of, and also in down there where the hydraulic lasher dust is sit. As for the swarfed, well I've given up on that, it's just got to be cleaned out properly when the head comes off. And you can see it shift from side to side, oh. but in yeah, terms of it, it turning in an anti-clockwise direction, it just doesn't want to do that. 
Well, there's nothing that could penetrate that thread with this thing in there, obviously. Well, you could try, but... Alright, so this is my go-to for, for removing shit that's stuck. Stuff that's stuck. So as the picture draw scores, that's the can. That's your injector, and you want the arrow to go that way. They call it Injector X. This is just like the dregs of a can I've used. I'm hoping there'll be enough. So this stuff will break down carbon better than anything else. I'm just going to squirt it sparingly because it's all I've got around the base of that bolt and then hopefully it'll sink its way down or well, it will sink its way down but whether it works its way down through the threads couple and then a couple of knocks side to side a, oh no you just you just set and forget with this stuff there we go so it's doing its thing so what you do then fortunately usually if you've got one stuck injector you've got two or three and in our case you've got one stuck bolt you've usually got two so what i'll do is i'll start drilling out this next one um i'll put my magnet back down the bottom there yeah so after i blew up the milwaukee gearbox and the drill that's off at the warranty place getting replaced no doubt so i'll see that back a week or two five year warranty on Milwaukee that's I've pretty good had I've had it two years or plus now I've done done a lot of work with it but I am a tradesman so I asked them once I said to Milwaukee I said to the Milwaukee specialist that comes around to the workshop I said so are you telling me that this gun that I bought I can use seven days a week in my tool as a tool of trade and if it breaks in five years, you'll warrant it. He said yes. So every day I pick up that tool and I test that warranty. Right, stick that there. Grab some other. This is just a little bit of old chain oil, which is grease in a can. Just to make sure I don't burn the tip on this drill. Cutting and stuff. It isn't particularly hard, but I'll do it anyway. See the smoke coming off, so there's definitely heat being built up. I'm just going to go and grab my light and see. So yeah, you want to stick your torch. The critical thing is, you can see that I've centralised the first drill, and then I just keep building it up. And so I've got that very fine edge around the outside of this, which means I've centralised it. This one here, I'm not. My centralisation was okay, but that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, just that's the key to this stuff. This whole head, if it gets reused, is going to be completely stripped down, bathed, washed, blown out, reassembled. So I'm not too worried about the swarf. The sump's coming off. Conrod bearings and ARP conrod bolts. Just another popular conversion on the F4R. Talking to an engineer today from GM on the engine test bed. They used to run ARP head bolts, uh, conrod bolts. Right, okay. So I started accusing him of a conrod bolt gate scandal. Oh. But his point was no, we need to run, it's the weakest link in the engine on the engine test beds. So we replace them so we can find the next weakest link. Yep. Just, sense. In, just in case you do get a batch of good head bolts, uh, good Conrod bolts on your LS motor, you can then go to the next weakest link. It's 
see how far will you take that down just as far beneath as, I, as far as i pretty much can yeah drill starting to overheat otherwise i'll have to go back and in then you'll and try cut, the cut a more of a pilot hole but like i said i think our goal is to get it at least a centimeter or so so that we're below the edge of that yeah that um are you gonna try do you want to try the same I will once I get it to shift, but it's in a tight spot there. So, yeah. but fortunately, because I stopped before it sheared off on this one, I may have I've got more to reach in and hit my. See, there's more shoulder, more of the original yeah. Torx shoulder on that one. There's a there's not a lot, but there's a little bit. It just started to disintegrate where this one just removed itself completely. So it just makes. Hopefully, if I do tap it, I'll be able to drive it out. But it's it's pretty much the when you're doing this type of job, it's the one thing you don't want to happen. It absolutely is. Like I, I told the boys at work, I've told other people, just never heard of this happening before. I'm sure someone out in Reno land has seen it. But, you know, let's keep going. I spray that magic cutting compound. Ooh. Ooh. Old cans in the last bits. issues I've got is I'm not a hundred percent square on I keep plunging the drill in eventually you get off course slightly and you cut into your threads now there might not be any threads in the top but then because you've got that whole alloy block so it won't be in the end of the scheme of things it's probably not super critical but it could result in a bigger mess so keep cutting the stuff straight into a depth but maybe this maybe the key to it is to cut a deeper plunge so you get a long tube of metal on the outside which allows it to stretch which we've proven it does but it doesn't necessarily want to turn for us and all the others as soon as you turn them a quarter of a turn they were free completely almost pull them out by hand that's all it took you know i guess the other argument is do we just grab the rattle gun and buzz these other ones back down again Try yeah, and lift a bit right. of the tension the, off these yeah, other two yeah. that are they're holding the tension that are holding, down. That are holding tension on it. So yeah, yeah, that's a strategy. That's that's another strategy. So I'll pull that one down, that one down, just pull them all down. Like you know, no point. You're never going to re re talk them to the level that they were talked to, but at least you can. It might just give you a small amount of compression. Yeah, that's it. That'll then allow this thing to. To move on you. Yeah, so let's before we get too far into it, let's give it another tap with the tapometer. Yep, now let's see what this wants to do without damaging any of my bearings. I'm trying to turn it in an anti clockwise direction. All I'm doing is crushing the area that I previously drilled. It's literally all it's done. Just taking the, the drillings bits are gone now. This is purely on the scale of debacle that I've never experienced before. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tap down. Send it home. So it goes hard like that. 
people have done is create a bigger mess. That's a big mess down in there. Let's put some light on it so you can really see it. So now, I have a rather large hole yeah. and a flared over material. Fortunately, that hole was centralized, so it's still a good, it's a good base to work on. Yeah, pull it out over. So the, is the thread purely in the block or it's... Um... Yeah, no, it's only in the metal. It's a metal on, it's a steel on steel thread on bolt. But the head... The head's just it... alloy, it's just a tube. Yeah, yeah, so there's no thread in that. No. No. You have to have the thread at one. It's just sandwich. It's a sandwich job. Yep. Yep, in spite of all the hammering, all the drilling, nothing moving. This is a vi this is the video I hope I didn't have to make. <laughs> this is like a challenge that I didn't really, on top of already the challenges we have in this project, really, really want to develop. Another set of... I have seen this car in more pieces though. This is still, this is re still relatively assembled. Compared yeah, to some yeah, of the other well, work, gearbox is a deassembly. Gearbox out's a big deassembly. Not doing that again for a while. I could do that. One of the schools of thought is grab that crane there, put it under this, take that nose cone off, and just pull the whole thing out. Yeah. That is a pot. That is a genuine option. That so if we if we get to the point that you've got to pull the head out over these bolts, is that when you remove the front end? Not really, no. Well, this can be done in there. That's, yeah. There's no reason. Like if, if I was like working on a Mercedes Benz and I had this problem and you've got the whole cowl over there and you yeah. can't work, you can't get your drill in, yeah, yeah. then you've got to pull the motor out. Yeah. But in this case, this plenty of space, plenty of... Yeah, so you, we take the heads off, remove the ones we can, get to separate it, you just put the bolts in and just lift it, weight? Yeah, yeah, I just use, normally I just use old head bolts. Oh, uh, yep. Bang yep. Into, straight back into the block with a bit of chain through it, set up your bit of chain and then just take the weight off, drop bit it back Bit of down, rubber mallet on gotta, the side, try and... It sounds so easy, but you know, you've got to take out drive shafts, you've yeah, got to take yeah, yeah. out stub axle assemblies, you've got to take out cross frames, it just goes on, the list goes to on, take and the on, motor on out. and on. To take the motor yeah, out. Yeah, no, and you don't want to do that. Other than, you know, nobody ever takes the motor out, just to do a timing belt. You can do the timing belt, no problems in the car. It's not fun, but you can do it. So I'm not worried about that side of things. The one that I was concerned about, and according to the last post I spoke to, is you can pull the sump off these without pulling the motor out. So I'll be doing the sump bolts, taking the pistons out. Uh, sorry, take the sump bolts off, drop the sump pan, pull out the, undo the bolts on the, on the pistons with no head on, I push the piston straight back up out of the motor, do the rings, do the bearings, put the new rod bolts in, push the clamp them up, push them back down, clamp them up from underneath, seal them all back up, put them back in. Yeah. There's no reason I can't do that, according to people who claim to have done it before. Good depth cut there. The center of these bolts is relatively soft. My, not the softest material known to man, but certainly not as hard as you might think for something that's a head bolt. You know, this could be, this is part of the reason we're talking about the cost of this job. So imagine you're a workshop, the quoted, not expecting this job to come, to, to this problem to arise doing the job, you would probably, unless you'd done what I've just done, you probably wouldn't factor it into your costing. But now, 
you've accepted the job, you've given the customer a fixed price quote. So there's no hope that you've said to the customer, well, if it all comes apart with the yeah, headlocks yeah. without needing special extraction. So a couple of caveats yeah. to the Wiley operator. But, that, you know, if you didn't know that, and you'd done a fixed price contract, you might now be looking down the barrel of, you know, three lost hours, three lost man hours at minimum, like one hour per bolt. <clears throat> would not be an understatement for this job. And now I'm in, how far deep is that? Let's just put my finger there, give you an idea. So I'm well, you know, mm. nearly getting close to an inch depth down from from the remainder of the head, not even the, the head, so. Do you want to try your extractor again? Well, let's just try. Look at that, it's not moving. It's just not moving, it's not even wanting to shift. Like, they are set of Nipex pliers, and this, this stuff grips every day of the week. All I'm doing is destroying my pliers. Let's see whether this one's... So that might be the problem too. I haven't done it deep enough, but I'll have a crack. And this is the problem again. In some people try to use these extractors on fasteners, mm. you actually end up spreading out yeah. the width of the fastener. We're fortunate because we have a tiny amount of wiggle room in this job, so that if it does stretch it out as it bites. Is that a bit of movement? <clears throat> I just want to move, it's going to move. It should move now. Lifted it out. Uh, one option is I plunge a bit deeper and then try and reuse this. It ain't moving. Seems to bite in there. And then they fall off. These are the most useless things I've ever reused in my life. <laughs> Not a fan. Not a fan at all. Like one option might be just so that I don't have to keep drilling like a madman, I can almost go and cut the tip off this. Yep. With the diagram, with the cut-off disc, which means that that's not now bottoming out, which I think it's coming close to or is. Yeah. So we eliminate the bottom out feature of this one. Go straight into And then I'm taper. biting into that bigger taper there. Yep. Without going the larger. So let's stop the camera. I'll go and cut this off. Cut off this there, and then we'll go from there. The Series 2 RX7 X Rally car. Another project. Ready and waiting. Another project. Five A Bridgeport. RX5 beer box. I've had a Extra passenger hand. seat on that one going off the off the road. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't. That was the start of its rally journey, not how it ended. <laughs> With someone else in the passenger seat going off the road. <laughs> So the final head bolt, guaranteed to be the most difficult. Yeah. You never start with the easy. You never start with the hard one, do you? We start with the easy. It's the main mistake people make. Get you in there. Yeah, so I really want need to get the depth on this cut, yep. on these cuts, just to so that it takes it down below that shoulder. So if I get the last one out, that one there. You can see it. I hadn't gone through, but I've got yeah, just a slight bust through there. You can see it's bellowed out when we've put the extractor on it. Mm. it has it caused any damage? Unlikely. Unlikely any damage yep. has been caused, so I'm not worried about that. But it's too high up, wouldn't it? Yeah, it is too high up, but you need to get that depth so that you can bite in. And you know, even if it bites in and stretches a little bit, like I said, I showed on the other one, it didn't stretch. It's mainly the bite factor, I think, is what we really need.
not as good cutting as nice as I'd like, but it is cutting. Still got that, look at that, there's a bit of aluminium swarf still jammed up that. <laughs> Let's cut some alley. Yeah, hole's getting down there, that's good. So is, is that the final step up or is there another? No, there's another step up. This is I'm really trying to cut depth. So yeah. I'm being a bit lazy, trying to cut the depth and the hole in one cut rather than cut another smaller hole, pilot it out and then go with this one. I'm happy with my centralization on the job. This is a slightly blunt drill bit, but it's not too bad. I, you know, I sharpen some of my own drill bits, so that can sometimes be your problem. And then you sort of go, well, it's not ideal for cutting steel, but it is still cut alley. Yeah, you can see that cutting's getting easier, eh? Mm. It's quicker, more junk coming out quickly, more swarf. Look at that. For the amount of time I just spent on that cut, I managed to produce more depth. But that depth is just, I think that depth's right. I don't think we need to go any more. I'll revert back to our bigger drill. Our bigger drill. I just want to stop here mm -hmm. and take a photo of how good my centralization of my drilling is because that is the key to your commencing. So what I'm trying to show you is that's what the bolt looks like when it's full. I punched a hole in the center of that bolt, started drilling, and how central am I? All freehand, mind you. What do you reckon? Am I central? Yep. We'll is find that, out when it comes Is that out. square central or what? Looks, it does look like it. That's it, well, it had to be close, but it wasn't a machine shop job. Extractor. Yep, well. This is going to be interesting, this one. Sometimes what I've found over the years is you can be busy drilling in a right hand cutting, the right hand cut, which mm -hmm. is clockwise, and all you're really doing is just making it tighter. <laughs> not to the extent that's going to cause you problems, but yeah. it just ends up being tighter. You're just not up on the course. You've seen these reverse flute um, drill bits, so you drill oh, deep yeah, right. in reverse, okay. and so as you're cutting down, if you start to loosen it off, it'll actually start reversing it for you, which is a good thing. Whereas you just gotta be mindful. If you're drilling through a hole, there's nothing behind it. Sometimes I find that I've, once I've drilled the guts out of the bolt, yep. or the sheared off thread, it just starts working its way through, and then the thing drops out the other side, which can be a problem sometimes. But. Alright, we'll go straight with old mate master master in extraction mode. No movement yet. Still biting in. Still biting in. Tightening. Stretching and biting. Do we use any decarbonizer on that last one? No. Okay, yeah, we'll get a try a bit more injector X. But generally it's so tight, it doesn't help anyway. Yeah, but if it anyway. was a case of a bound up nut the thread, then it would help. But I couldn't see how it's going to help this time. It's just a waste of injector X. Just for the smell of it. <laughs> Now we're getting to the final stages, so if it's going to move, this is the move time. Oh, 
now we're at the move spot. There you yep, go. There you go. Love oh, that sound. That's the sound. Look at that. That was all it was. From there to there yep. was the difference between tight and no tight. Oh. Well. Back on track. 